But now when found was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. Precious did that grace appear the hour I first. My friends, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. spirit. We gather this day, the fourth Sunday of Lent. We gather in this most unusual way for so many of us. It is an empty church in front of me, but it is a hopeful church online. Joining me is Father Jordan, our associate pastor. We pray this day, this late Tare Sunday, we have to find in the midst of all of this, in the midst of Lent, in the midst of this challenge, hopefulness, a reason for joy, a reason to trust the Lord. So much is laid before us, so much in the world is difficult and dirty, but so much in faith is about conversion, being washed clean and cleansed. Let us prepare ourselves for the joy of this moment by knowing we must set some things aside. Let us prepare by turning to the Lord, knowing that we can humbly and confidently ask forgiveness of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Hear ye, lay song. Christe Leison, Kyrie Leison. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, as God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth, and splendid appearance. The Lord said, 
There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you and with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So the said, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So as I thought about my homily for this week, one of the images that came to mind, I, I remember a few years ago on Christmas, my mother, who is now elderly, she decided in the course of the months leading up to Christmas to take all of our kind of the children things that she had of ours, pictures and our little projects, our little Mother's Day cards with, with some arts and crafts to them. And she put each one for each child into a binder, into a scrapbook. She was scrapbooking, as they say, to give back to us. And as each of us quickly paged through it, at least the, the five boys of the family all at one point or another came across a picture when we were probably five, six years old, where somehow we had found a mud puddle. We had decided, every boy at some point decides that they are going to cover themselves in mud. And that always, I, and to this day, whether you were my age or whether I see your families on Facebook and Twitter, they're, they're, this is still a natural thing. Maybe more for boys than girls, but if we can find something to mess ourselves up in, we seem to be drawn. I thought about that, and I asked myself the question, why did Jesus have to make mud? We translate it today as clay, but other translations would say he, made, he took his spit on the ground and he made mud, and then he smeared it on the eyes of the, blind, the man born blind. You know begin to look up all the different possibilities and different theologians and scholars. Some will say, well, that's, that's the dirt of the earth. That's the, the humus. That's the, the reminder of Ash Wednesday. You are dust and unto dust you shall return. It's the idea of going back to our creation. Others will take a, a more moral view. That's the, the dirt of our sin. That's the evil of the world. That's everything that's penetrating our soul that has to be washed away. I wonder if it's just a little more simple. It's just a little more straightforward. That every day of our lives, you know, as Pope Francis says, we need to get closer to the sheep. We need to get a little dirty in the field hospital that is our faith. I think it's just the reality of life that allows us to see a child crying or suffering, that allows us to see a person hungry, that allows us to see a neighbor shut in even now more than ever who needs our attention the world is a little bit or the world is a lot of a dirty place and we have to get into it sometimes but we get into it not because we relish in the dirt and the evil maybe a child does for a moment until mom catches them 
But in truth, we know that in our lives, in our faith, the mud can be washed away. We know that if we truly strive to move towards the Lord, even in the midst of the dirt and the mud, even in the midst of the, the grit and the grime, we will see a shining reality of Christ's love. We will see a shining promise in the sacraments and in the scriptures. We will see the resurrection coming closer and closer on a horizon. We may have mud all around us, but we have a chance to be cleaned. This Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent, in the midst of the Lenten season, we'd step back a moment from the drear and the you know, the heaviness of our prayer, penance, and almsgiving. We don't give it up today. We realize, though, that we should give rejoice. We've made it halfway through Lent. We've made it through some of the challenges, yet there is more to come in the Lenten season in our civic, our worldly journey. There's still mud to trudge through, but there's reason to hope. There's reason to bring out the rose-colored vestment just for that glimpse through the mud and the muck and the dirt and the ground. So today, with so much changing around us so fast, with it seems like so much is imposing, maybe just for a moment, even if the world is muddy and dirty, it would just be a moment like we do with children. Take a picture of it, remember it, and then wash off. We have a promise on the horizon. A few weeks hence, maybe in our lives a few years from now, maybe in salvation history it'll be, it'll be generations from now. But as we wash the mud away, Christ fulfills a promise. As the mud recedes, Christ raises us, gives us new sight and new vision, and a promise, a promise that nothing of this earthliness will anchor us so badly that in conversion of heart and forgiveness of sins, we could not be released from it and find our heavenly home. There's mud and there's dirt, but there's truly hope and light in Christ. In faith now, let us turn to the Lord and express our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. There is mud, there is dirt, there is a difficult, challenging world around us, but in faith and in hope we're able to turn to the Lord now with our prayers of petition. For the church... May God help us remain faithful to all of his commandments and grow in the fullness of the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may the Lord grant them the fortitude to remain true to his justice, especially in this time of uncertainty and challenge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, for those who are affected by the coronavirus, may the healing power of Jesus come upon them and bring them comfort and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here and at home, 
May the Holy Spirit increase in us a spirit of conversion and openness to his work in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who have died, may they, through the mercy of God, rest in the fullness of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Paul's intention of this Mass, the people of St. Eugene and St. Monica parishes, for my intention for this Mass, John and Judith Kenny, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you sent your only Son to be our Savior in faith and in hope, asking the intercession of St. Eugene and St. Monica. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer, for to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, for through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed are you, Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours, Almighty Father, may the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song of adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, 
by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Eugene and St. Monica, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at the passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 My friends, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us, us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. In your heart or in your family, share a gesture of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As our communion meditation lets together offer an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself Holy to you. Never, Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few announcements as I've offered each day. Please do keep in mind uh, the elderly and those who are in vulnerable health, uh, health states, medical states, reach out to them. Uh, just a phone call if you can, if you, if you must. Maybe help them learn how to use email or Skype with their children and grandchildren or to be able to watch things like the Mass or the Rosary as we try to offer them. Also remember to support uh, outreach, our uh, St. Eugene's 
I, I, there was some confusion yesterday. There may be this afternoon, uh, beginning at from noon to one, an opportunity to drop off some more dry goods at St. Eugene Parish to support the food pantries. Uh, I apologize if that is not correct, but obviously a lot of things are being done by a lot of cross crisscrossed emails and texts of late. But uh, do in some way possible support the outreach for a lot of people who are losing work. Uh, support your parishes. Uh, I have, as I try to better use these formats, uh, Twitter and Facebook on Facebook, I did uh, something in the interactive se section, a little three-question poll to see how people are utilizing this time, how they're feeling in this time, or out doing some outreach in this time. So maybe take a moment and uh, see if you can click on the poll, uh, the interactive poll that is there to give us some feedback. Most importantly in this time, offer prayer, prayer for... Uh, the community, the world, for those making decisions. Uh, these are challenging times. We will continue for as long as is feasible and allowed. We will continue to keep, at least in my parishes, the churches open uh, for some period of time each day, or at least the visitation chapel. Uh, and we will attempt to maintain uh, a period of adoration as is normal. Check uh, the parishioners will get emails as to those times and whatnot. So uh, please know of Father Jordan and I, one of the, the greatest challenges in priesthood is not being able to offer this sacrifice of the Mass to a community, to a group of people. Uh, we are blessed to, you know, we have this opportunity. Uh, I'm thankful to Stacy who cantered this morning and David who played music this morning. Uh, all maintaining proper social distancing there in different directions um, so but we are we are able to do this but we pray for you we pray for you each day and we are thankful for your prayers for us make the most of this Lenten day find on this Letare Sunday something to be joyful about let us now pray for God's blessing Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thank you.